Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Ibrahim. Ibrahim. Hitting us with our very first donation of the day. Ibrahim, thank you. Check this out. See this? You guys wanted purple? Oh, and I will say it is very nice to write with. Yes. Actually, let me write a little bit bigger. I think it's too small because you guys can't really read it there. There we go. It's a little bit bigger. Well, tiny bit bigger. I can't make it too big or else I won't have any room to write the actual lesson for today. But welcome, everyone. I saw a bunch of you guys hanging out in chat uh, before we even got started here. Ahimong, Zilly, my moderators, welcome. Uh, Chris O, Lynn, Let's see who else here is one of my members. Uh, Chris O, Chayun, oh yeah, Yeonjun, what's up? Noah, Noah Deeps, how's it going? Kate June, yes. IH, do you offer private lessons one on one? No, I do not. Um, because I don't think I'd be able to price it fairly that I'd be able to offer it to enough people, but then still fairly enough that I would still even have time to make new videos. So I don't really know. Um, if you want to suggest how that would work, uh, feel free to send me an email or uh, message me on Discord and I can consider it, but I've never done it before. Mash that like button. That's right. Oh, Lauren Starred, welcome. We had actually, um, between last stream and this stream, we actually had dropped down, I think it was to 37? Let me check. Uh, members, yes, right now we have 40 members. Right now we have 40 members on YouTube, so I just wanna say thank you for your support. It's completely optional, but I do really appreciate it. And we had actually dropped down to like 36 or something this week, but then it went right back up to 40. So what I think it is, I think YouTube just kind of, YouTube has issues like resubscribing people when their month ends. So it'll like kind of do this all the time, but yes. Uh, oh, Poya, Poya S, 229. Any significance to 229? <laughs> 229. Uh, you, you like, you live in Germany. Welcome. 환영합니다. I miss the days of learning A and ASL. Yes. Uh, Eun <laughs> welcome. With the nice KiCat logo next to your name. Oh, Yeonjun, you also have the KiCat logo. I didn't, I just now realized that. Yes, we're gonna, be, we're gonna be getting started very soon. I'll start at two o'clock. Um, a few announcements before we get started. First of all, uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone who's doing Thanksgiving. I don't know if, is Thanksgiving one of those things like you don't do it if you're a certain religion? I don't know. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone, <laughs> whether you do it or not. Uh, I do Thanksgiving um, every year with my, with my family. I always make the uh, candied yams. I, I can make those really well. And uh, my mom cooks a bunch of stuff. My little brother will make pies. He'll make them completely homemade with the uh, crust and everything. And they're really good. He makes, per and oh, yeah, and the pumpkin too. Yeah, pumpkin pies. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. That'll be great. Uh, another announcement is uh, just a reminder. We do have merchandise for Go Billy. So another way if you want to support this channel is that you can get merchandise. There are shirts, uh, cell phone cases. There are um, like hoodies and uh, pretty much there's a lot of stuff. There's stickers too, so and cups as well. So yeah, go check it out. There's a link in the description. Uh, also remember that all the worksheets and outlines are on Patreon. So you can get these if you're a Patreon member and including today's outline, which will go up in a bit. And today's worksheet is already there. I think it has 14 problems on it uh, related to using A and A all. So if you have that, you can print it out and uh, complete that during today's lesson or afterward. And uh, another thing is, if you're noticing, I don't know if you've noticed, my voice is a little bit different today. Actually, Sunday night, I lost my voice completely. And Monday it was gone, Tuesday it was gone. But I have, I've gotten it back mostly now. But it's still a little bit like, it's 90% there. 
So that's why my voice sounds the way it does. But it's, it's fine other than that. It just sounds a little bit, a little bit strange still. And take a look at the prerequisites before we start. I'll just go back to the chat for another minute. Tiffany, stay my day. Welcome. Candied hams? No, candied yams. They're candied yams, not candied hams. <laughs> not steamed hams either. No deeps. You know, the yams that have um, the marshmallows on top of them? Those are called candied yams. I guess, I didn't even know what they were called. I always just call them like yams with marshmallows when I was a kid. But yeah, so uh, my mom used to make them, but then she gave me her recipe for that. So I use my mom's recipe to make it. And they're really good. It was from like an old, the original uh, Betty Crocker cookbook, like a really, really original one. And it was like that recipe altered a little bit that we use. So yeah, they're pretty good. Hero Soup, hi Billy, I bought your third book. Nice, thanks for the support. Good to hear you're on the third book. Hope you enjoy it. Feel free to ask questions. IH, I sent you an email on your website about private lessons. Uh, just right now, or you had already? I don't see an email. Mm. Yeah, I don't see an email right now. Unless you're talking about you sent it like previously, like a week ago or something. Sweet potato pie. Hobak pie. Nice. I'm European, confused every time people talk about Thanksgiving. Well, Thanksgiving, it's a lot of European food. Um, it's kind of like, sometimes Korean people will ask like, you know, what is American food? And it's kind of difficult to describe like, what is American food? You know, you can say hamburgers and hot dogs and pizza, I guess, cause you know, there are versions of those things. But um, I think like Thanksgiving food is quite, it's pretty American food. It's kind of like Americanized, British food, I guess, if you want to call it that. Some stuff is just straight up British food. But uh, yeah, so I like Thanksgiving food. It usually makes uh, at least two days or three days worth of good meals for leftovers after it's over. Does Korean have a language test? Like I tell, they do have the topic, T-O-P-I-K, which you can search, the test of prof proficiency in Korean. And uh, that has six levels and uh, goes from super beginner into six is quite proficient uh, with lots of vocabulary, I'd say. You're making me hungry. We're not gonna be talking about food today though, too much. Um, but yes, you might be wondering, why am I in this uh, marketplace? You know, I'm actually at a Namdaemun, Namdaemun Market. So you might be thinking, Billy, why are you, what are you doing at Namdaemun Marketplace? Well, actually you see, I'm, I'm waiting in line right now for some delicious Korean food. There is this famous, this famous place here that makes tteokbokki and it's famous for tteokbokki here that and everyone lines up for it. But uh, the line, it's, it's extremely long. You know, I think they haven't even opened yet. So there's this line going out, you know, a few, it's, a, it's like a block away and I'm, I'm in the line right now just waiting for it to start. And I think it's gonna be another like maybe hour, hour and a half before they even start letting us in. So I felt, you know, while I'm waiting in line for this tteokbokki anyway, I might as well teach a live Korean class, right? I mean, you know, a good use of my time. So that's why we're here in Namdaemun Market. We'll get started in just a minute. You know, at two o'clock, I just like to give some introductions before we start. Hot dog. Yeah, I really like hot dog too. For those of you who haven't tried it, um, hot dog is kind of like, um, it's a pancake made with, I think it's sticky rice, like gluten, uh, rice flour. I think it's made with like sticky kind of rice flour. So, um, but it has the consistency, it, it looks kind of like a small pancake, but it's a little bit more chewy and stretchy. So inside of this little small flat pancake, um, is usually different kinds of nuts, kind of like chopped pine nuts. And sometimes they'll have some that have uh, like walnut inside of them. And there's a few varieties you'll see. And, and then honey. Now I say honey, but it's usually kind of more like a honey mixed with corn syrup or a honey flavored corn syrup. But anyway, it's honey nuts inside of a uh, rice flour pancake. So yeah, it's like really chewy and you bite into it like the inside's really hot and you can kind of like peel it open, you know, and honey will drip down and the nuts are really crunchy and 
Uh, they, they oil it and they fry it on this big kind of like, uh, what do you, what would that be? Like, uh, uh this big, like breakfast, oh, I can't, I'm blanking out. What's, what's the word? Anyway, they fry it in oil on this flat surface. And, uh, so it'll kind of like puff up into a ball and then as it like cooks, it'll go flat again, but they're really good. And the, the nice thing though, is that, um, they're. They're fairly filling, so if you're like a little bit hungry, you just want a snack, you can get one and you're good, one or two. And they're cheap. So when I used to live in Korea, originally I would get them on a street corner. There used to be a lot more street corner food. Nowadays they're mostly gone, except in certain areas. And uh, they would be two for a dollar, but nowadays they are more like a dollar each. But it depends, some places will still do two for a dollar that are smaller. But yeah, definitely get them. Um, they have some other varieties of them now. I've seen some that are like, they have some that are hollow on the inside where they'll just kind of like put a little bit of spread of the honey on the inside and they're other than that, they're hollow. Pass those. They're, they're, they're okay, but they're not the original. You should get the original ones. They're really good. The new ones, like I said, they're good, but they're not, they're not quite as good. It's kind of more like a fad. GF. <laughs> 떡볶이 너무 싫어요. You don't like 떡볶이? Why? 개준. 왜요? 떡볶이 왜 싫어요? 떡볶이 맛있는데. 바클라바? Uh, LR Pan. I'm not sure what kind of baklava you're eating. Um, my mom makes baklava. My mom actually makes award-winning baklava. She used to, when I was a teenager, she used to enter it into some local fairs. And she won several of the, uh, the what is it, the grand prize that the fairs would have for their their food for her bakula. She has a really good authentic recipe that she makes. She's not Greek or anything. She just makes baklava and she makes it all the time for her coworkers. They always uh, purchase it or, or ask her to make it for like some charity event or something. But yeah, baklava is great. Um, I've never had any stomach problems with baklava. I think you might be eating some strange baklava or maybe they make it too wet. That's what I don't like is sometimes they'll make it where it's really wet on the outside. Okay, anyway, we'll get started now. Thank you everyone for your patience. Um, today's lesson, we're going to be learning about a e and a e saw. So it's going to be a beginner level lesson, but don't worry. There are going to be plenty of opportunities for you to ask questions as well as participate. And, um, because this is a beginning lesson, if you are intermediate or you have more advanced questions, feel free to ask those either partial, possibly during the lesson, but preferably if they're more, much higher level. After the lesson, I'm going to have a short section for a Q and A. So you can ask any questions that you want. If you have more advanced questions, um, for today's lesson, make sure you're at least able to use the you form and conjugate the past, present and future tense. Uh, this is just basic. It's not like any specific reason that you need this other than, uh, the form we're going to be using today, the grammar, the grammar particles we're going to be using today in order to use them, we need to be able to make sentences. And in order to make sentences, you need to have basic conjugation ability. So that's all you need for today. So let's get started. The first particle we're going to be learning today is just a. Now, unless you're a total beginner, you've definitely seen this before and used it before and probably know how to use it in general. Um, this is actually a location marker. Now this is called a location marker because it marks the location of something. It marks the location of something. So maybe, you know, a, maybe you didn't know that it's actually a location marker. So by that, I mean, it marks where you're going, the location of where you're going, or it marks the location of where something exists, where something is like my bag is over there. Well, over there is a location that you could use a to show that where it is. So this is a location marker. Again, it'll show where you're like going or coming from or something like that. And then where something exists. So it marks the location of where you're going or where someone's coming from or some, or sorry, where someone's going to or moving or some sort of thing like that, the location, and it marks where something exists. So, um, the translation though for a, there are a lot of ways to translate a, so you might see it translated as to, like I'm going to the store, but it doesn't have to be to. Um, you might also see it translated as in or at, like I'm going to meet him 
in the supermarket or I'm going to meet him at the library, something like that, or it is at, let, let me give a better example. Um, where is Charsu? Well, Charsu is in the house. Charsu is in the library. Charsu is at home. Charsu is at work. So that's what I mean by showing the location something is going, going to somewhere, or where something exists. But there are more ways to translate it than just in and at. It really just depends on the sentence. So it, it's much better if you understand that this simply marks the location and then the translation for that exactly will vary sentence to sentence. So some sentences it might be in or at, or it could be completely different depending on the sentence, but its purpose is always the same, to mark the location of where someone or something's going or where it exists. Okay, so let's give an example. Here is a very basic example. Okay. Don't worry, it'll get a little it'll get a little bit more advanced than this, but this is a basic example to start. Since we are learning a basic concept. Tonin, so I as for me, tonin, cheap a house. A kayo. Go. Oh, let me check the donation. I gotta see what we got. Gina, oh, we got a new member. Gina Cianforni. That's the name I can't pronounce. <laughs> Let's put Gina C here. Gina C, welcome. New member, thank you. Oh, I gotta give a dab. I gotta give a dab for a new member. I also gotta give small dabs for the donations too. So Ibrahim's donation, whew, thank you. Let's close that. Uh, Ibrahim's donation as well as Puya S donation. And now our new member, Gina. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Let's check the chat for a second. What was that accent? I don't know. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. That was the Cianfoni. I'm not sure what language it is either. I, I'm sorry. I was just assuming maybe it's Italian. <laughs> apologize, Gina, if you're not Italian. And I apologize if you are Italian <laughs> for messing up your name. Okay, Tonin, Chip. Eh? So, I, house, location. So now this marks the house as a location. So you can think of it as just meaning house to, okay. But it might be better if you just for now think of it as meaning house is a location of some sort of, maybe something where something's moving to or going to or something exists. Well, let's look at the next verb, kayo, from kada, to go. So we get tonin, house, location, go. So I go, house is the location where I go. That's it. In this case, it would be good to translate it as to. Let me show you. I go to house. But this is where I said it's better to think of this as meaning a location marker instead of just thinking of it as meaning to. The reason being this English translation, I go to house or maybe I go to home, right? Does anyone ever say I go to home? I go to house? No, you say I go home. Or you could say I go to my home. That's okay too. I go home. So in this case, you don't even need to really translate it as to, as long as you know that it's marking the location. So to is a really good translation, but it's not always going to mean to when used with a location. Just keep that in mind. Tonin sibe kayo. I go home or I go to the house. Something like that. Okay, let's just check the time. Okay. All right. Next example sentence. A few these first ones will be quite easy. Charsu nen. So here we have our friend Charsu. Chigum right now. Chiga means right now. Chigum, Chibe, so we have house again. But now, Charsu is not going to be going home now. Charsu is going to exist or be at home. Charsu then, so Charsu as for, so let's talk about Charsu now. We're talking about Charsu here. 
철수는 지금 right now 집에 있어요. 철수는 지금 집에 있어요. 철수 is now 집에 location home. So whatever we're going to be doing now, the location of that is home. 있어요. Exists. He is. He is right now at home. Or maybe you could say in his home, right? Either way, the location where he is, where he exists, is here. 집. So at home or in home or however you want to translate that. It could be various ways depending on your sentence. 철수는 지금 집에 있어요. 철수 now is at home. 철수 is home now. Next example. Okay, let's do, let's add something new. Okay, 어디 means where. So we can have 어디에 가요 as a question and we get where are you going? You could, you could attach 철수는 or something if you wanted to ask specifically about someone else, you know. 철수는 어디에 가요? Where, where is 철수 going? 철수가 어디 가요? But 어디에? So here we have A again, marking the location. So the location of something. Well, where? Where is the location? Location is unknown. It is a where. Where is the location? So where does something exist? Or where is something going? Well, in this case, 어디에 가요? Where is he or she or it going? 어디에 가요? Where is it going? Where is he or she going? But there is an exception with a few words in Korean. 어디 does not need to use 에. Anytime you have 어디 followed by 에, it is completely optional. So you can remove this. You can just say 어디 가요. And it's perfectly fine. It has the same exact meaning as not using a. Now, you might think then, well, so I can use, so can I remove a because it's optional anytime I want? Can I say 철수는 집 가요? Yes and no. For today's lesson, I'm going to say no because to use, let's say this again, to mark something as the location of an action, you know, where something's going or where something exists. When you're doing that with the a particle, it is not optional ever, except with a few specific places, a few specific words. You can remove a only on a few specific words. And those are oldi, yogi, oops, Hogi and togi. So the ones that show a location, uh, yogi being here, kogi being over there next to the listener, togi being far away from both me and the listener, so way over there, togi, yogi, kogi, togi, and odi can all optionally remove a. And most of the time, a is removed from these. So it's optional. You can say odi a kayo. But more often, people will simply say, 어디 가요? Or, 여기? Well, you wouldn't really say, 여기 가요. Go, he is going here. But, you know, you could say, 거기 가요. You could say, 여기 와요. He's coming here. You don't have to say, 여기 에 와요. You can just say, 여기 와요. 거기 가요. 저기 가요. So it's optional with these words. Now, there are a few other words where it's optional, but it's not like a thing. It's not something that you can just you know, remove them as you wish. There are only specific words that don't need it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later in today's lesson. But for now, just think about oldi, yogi, kogi, and togi as it being optional. So you don't need to use a when using these words. So we have oldie, kayo, where are you going to? Or in English, we can just say, where are you going? We don't really need to say, where are you going to in English either. It has the same meaning. It means to. So it's optional in Korean as well. Um, let's do the next example. Let's see, how are we on time? Oh, let's do one more with this. So we have oldi a kayo, but now let's change it. 
ODA ISOYO, or optionally just ODI ISOYO. So we can say something like, Charsu, let's get our friend Charsu again. Charsu nen ODI ISOYO, or Charsu nen ODI ISOYO. So where is Charsu? This A marks the location, and in this case, you don't really need to translate it. You can just say, where is Charsu? You don't need to say, where is Charsu at? You could, but just Charsu nan odi soyo, where is Charsu? The end. So in that case, you don't really need to always translate it. So yeah, think of it as meaning marking the location, but don't always think of it as having to translate. You don't have to necessarily translate A, uh, and a lot of times you won't. So just kind of pay attention to how it's being used in a sentence and then decide if you actually have to write that in English. Okay, we're doing pretty good on the time. If, we, if I can finish this lesson on time, we'll have plenty of time for uh, uh, examples as well and uh, Q&A. Okay, let's do one more example, actually two more, and then we're gonna go on to the next section. Okay, so, yeah, let me do that one for here. Okay. Tegun. So now we have tek, which is a word that means book. So tek, tegun, teksang. Teksang means desk. So I know it has tek in it, but it's, it's desk. It's not the same word, although it is kind of related. But anyway, tegun, teksang, we. We is what's called in Korean a post position. Now in English, we have prepositions. Prepositions are things like above, below, through, inside, outside, you know, those are pre uh, prepositions. Maybe the teacher like showed a picture of like an airplane going around a cloud or in a cloud or something like that to show it. Well, in Korean, they're the same thing, but they come after the noun. Instead of saying on the desk, in Korean, they say desk on. That's why they're called post position because they come post, they come after the word. So, Chaeksang, we means on the desk. You just write these words here to help. Tegun, Tekseong, we. So the top of the desk. Tekseong, we means the top or on, you know, the top part, the surface, the top part or on top of something. So Tekseong, we means the top of the desk. Well, now we're going to show that this is the location of something. So we're going to add a. So a is marking Tekseong, we as the location for something. Now, what is it? Is the book going to be going on top of the desk or is the book going to be on the top of the desk? In this case, it's going to be just existing on top of the desk. So we can have isoyo. Okay, so now we have chegun as for the book, chegsang wi on top of the desk, e marking the location of something as being chegsang wi isoyo exists. So the book is on top of the desk. 책은 책상 위에 있어요. The book is on top of the desk. Pretty easy, right? Okay. However, we're not restricted to only using 있어요, you know, 있다, exist, with this location. Well, what other things do you think? Uh, just let, let me ask you guys this. What, what other verbs could show the lo What other verbs could you do with the location of this book. So we have, as for the book, 책은, now we have 책상 위 as the location for something. Well, what else do you think we could put here? Besides 있어요, could there be anything else that you could think of that we might be able to put here? What do you guys think? 책상은 책 아래 있어요, all right. Sure, sure, if you want to be like that. Nah, nothing, nothing mean is happening, happening to Charsu today. Me, my, me wrote, uh, sumoyo. Okay, well, your conjugation wouldn't be correct by that. But you could say, yes, is hiding. The book is hiding on top of the desk. You could say it like that. I mean, you wouldn't conjugate it. You'd probably do the um, state conjugation, sumo ita. I could do that in another lesson if you want. But yeah, you could say something like that. Okay. Yeah, I see. Was that your stomach? Yeah, I think that was the, the 
drink going down my throat. That wasn't even my stomach. Okay, so you could also say something like this. So now we have is not, does not exist, the location on top of the desk, the book. So the book does not exist on top of the desk, or there is no book, or the book is not on top of the desk. Desk. The book is not on top of the desk. So if you're looking for the book, well, it's not on top of the desk. Okay. Next sentence. Oh yeah, no. Next concept, actually. Now, you'll use... We used we with a, so we had chaksang we, but it goes with any preposition. So if you were to say an, inside, pak, outside, um, are, you know, beneath, like that, or mite for beneath as well, um, any of these other prepositions, you would also mark them with a if they're being used as a location. Now, if you were not saying, if you were not using these as a location to mark where something's going or where something exists, you know, or doesn't exist, then you wouldn't use a. So you're not just going to stick a on the end of a position every single, sorry, you're not going to stick a at the end of a preposition anytime you're using it, unless it's being used to mark the location. That's why I want, I want you to really get that A is used as a location marker. It's not just something that you stick on anytime you use a preposition. It's not something you just stick on anytime you have movement. It's specifically used to mark the location of something. If something is not being used as a location, do not use A. If you were to just say that, um, the inside of the house is hot. You're talking about the inside. You're not talking about going inside. You don't need to use A if it's not marking the location of something. If, in that case, you're just describing the inside. So you wouldn't say on A unless you were talking about the location being inside the house. Like you are hot inside of the house, okay? But if you're saying the inside of the house, you know, the top of the book, the, the top of the desk is flat. You wouldn't use we A if you're describing the top of the desk because there is no location. Nothing's, nothing is located there. You're just specifically talking about Texan we, the top of the desk, as in the actual top of the desk. If there's nothing happening on there, you're not just going to say we a and then say it's flat or, you know, it's hard or it's broken. So you wouldn't use a in those cases. Does this make sense? You only want to use it when it's actually being used to mark the location of something. And the reason I'm saying this is because I've seen a lot of people every time they use a prep uh, post position, they'll stick A on the end because they think it's required because most of the time it's used like that. Most of the time, uh, post positions are being used as the location, like to say it's, it is inside or it is outside or it's behind the wall, you know. It's behind the wall. Like that. So of course, yeah, you'll see it. But if you want to say the back side of the wall is dark, you know, or is far away or I don't know, whatever you'd want to say, it made of brick. You wouldn't say tie because now you're actually talking about this. You would say something, something, something. You describe whatever you wanted to talk about. So that's what I want to make, make clear that you're not just going to be using a on every post position or in every situation unless you're actually using it to mark the location of something, you know, where something's going or where something is or where something isn't like that. Or someone gave a good example in chat in chat. Now, I'm not going to be teaching this form. It's if you already know this form. If you don't already know this form, just ignore it. Someone wrote sumo. Well, they wrote sumo soya, but anyway. Sumo ita means to be hiding. So if you were to say, um, it is hiding under the desk. Check sang. You could say bite or are bite. You might want to do bite so. But anyway, sumo ita is hiding. It's still showing the location that it's hiding is under the desk. So that was just uh, some other person gave an example in chat. I think me, my, me, my, me, my, something. That user gave that example, which I thought was pretty good. Okay. A can also do one more thing. So it marks the location, right? I told you it's a location marker. 
as in where something is going or where something exists. But it has one more use. It also marks the time. So in addition to marking the location, A can also mark the time. By that, I mean at or in. Now again, this translation could change depending on the sentence that it's in. But this is how you say at two o'clock, at three o'clock. So it marks the location physically, but it also marks the location in time. So you can still think of it as a location marker, but that's a bit abstract. You know, I'm not sure if you, if that would make things easier to think of it as marking physical location or abstract location, you know, like time or something like that. But you can just think of it as two separate uses, location marker, time marker. So this marks the time at which something happens or at which, you know, anything exists. So it's any sort of time that you're going to mark with this. So let me give you an example of that. Right after this donation. Let's see how am I? Okay, good. I'm on. I'm okay on time. Amy Jane Foster. Wow. Nice big donation. Amy Jane Foster. Wow, big donation. I'm a little shy to say I'm still quite a beginner. Well, that's okay. Most most people learning Korean are still in the beginner level. But thank you so much, Billy. Your lessons always help me a big time. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you're hopefully you're getting something out of today's lesson too. Um, I'm, I'm trying not to make it too basic, but you know, beginner friendly. So thanks for coming and thanks for your donation. Okay, next. So the example I wanted to give you, how to use it with time. Let's do, we'll meet at three o'clock. So we can say, we, so we or us. Now we have at, three o'clock, which is se, pronounced as se, I'll just write that here. Know that when three is used with time to mark, to mark the hour, it's used with pure Korean numbers. So you get hana, tu, set like that. So han, tu, se, se, si, e. Uri se, si, e. At. Mannayo. So we will meet or we meet. It's okay to translate the regular you form as future. It's often used as like a future form whenever you don't need to be specific that it's going to happen in the future. Like if you don't need to say we will meet at three. No, 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 not right now. We will meet later at three. If you don't need to say that, just use the regular you form. It sounds perfectly natural. We meet at three means we will meet at three. In Korean, it's not so strict how you do the tenses like it is in English. You have to say we will meet if it's in the future and we meet if it's right now. But if you're already talking about seishie, you know, it's already going to be assumed to be in the future. We meet at three o'clock means we will meet at three o'clock. Uri seishie mannayo. We will meet or we meet at seishie. This e marks the time. So when seishie mannayo. We meet at three o'clock. Now, before we go on, um, actually, no, let me give it one more extent, one more sentence, and then I'll tell you some more examples where you don't use a before I, I get too far ahead. Okay. So we say she So we'll meet at three o'clock. So this marks at the time or could be in the time, which I'll show you an example. Let's do one more. Chonin. So I hung sang always hung sang is an adverb that means always. Chonin hang sang. 아침에, 아침 means morning. It can also mean breakfast if you're talking about eating. I'll just write that down here. 아침 먹어요, 아침 먹다 means to eat the morning, but it's actually an abbreviation for 아침 식사, which means morning meal. Oops, I got another donation. Check that out. Oh, two. Oh, that means the board's going to break. <laughs> I think the board's going to break. Oh, it didn't break. Okay, yay. It always breaks whenever I get two donations at the same time. Lynette. Oh, and I didn't give a dab for Amy Jane Foster. Okay, let me give a dab for Amy Jane first. Whew. Holding the marker. 
Thank you, Amy Jane. As well as Lynette. Lynette. John. Thank you, Lynette. Oh, you got the uh, the bird. That's the first. That's the first time I've seen someone use the animated, the animated uh, little character. I, at least the first time I've noticed it. I'm not sure if other people have used it. That's pretty cool. And then Yunjun. You told me not to call you Chai Yunjun, so I'll call you Yunjun. Kaiyaseyo, 친구랑 한국 음식을 먹어요. 먹으러 가요. 먹으러. I'll write that here. 먹으러. Kada means to go to do something. This 으로 is what you want. 먹으러 가요. 빌리 쌤 너무 고마워요. 다들 안녕. Nice. Uh, Yunjun, thank you. Really appreciate that. Let me give, uh, give you guys some dabs. First dab for uh, Lynette. Second dab for Yunjun. Thank you. I really appreciate your donations. It's completely optional, but it does help a lot. Um, you know, lately, I, I got a big, I got a giant box of these purple markers because you guys asked for purple, and I agreed. That purple's pretty cool. So it kind of stands out from everything else. Okay, so, oh yeah, let me finish this. So, 아침에, 저는 항상 아침에, so morning, and this is marking the time, A. Now, before it was um, at three o'clock, but here it's not, you're not gonna say at the morning. I always at the morning. You're probably gonna say in the morning, here. So it could be in, it could be at, it might depend on the translation. But anyway, it's marking the time. So the time is morning. So now we have 배가, so stomach. Pei means stomach, or actually, to be more technical, pei means belly, not stomach. If you're actually talking about like your legitimate, your stomach, like the organ inside your body, they don't say pei, they actually say we. We, I know you learned we as top. It's a different word, it's a different homonym. It has the same uh, pronunciation, but different meaning. We uh, actually comes from Chinese. This means the actual stomach, like the organ inside your body that holds your food is we. So if you have some we problem, you would use we. Otherwise, pay is like belly. It's kind of more like, you know, in English, we would say like my, my stomach hurts, but in Korean, they would do pay belly. They're actually saying the whole belly, which really when you're saying your stomach hurts, you're, you're not, your stomach doesn't hurt, it's your intestines, right? So pay refers to that belly area, whereas we would actually be your real stomach, which is higher, which is up here, kind of in your chest. Um, so your doctor lesson for today. <laughs> Pega a pile. Oh, sorry, not actually not not pega a pile. Let's do pega cool pile. Be a little bit better. If your stomach always hurts in the morning, you might need to go see a doctor. Okay, cool pile. Cool puda becomes cool pile. Pega cool pile. Or just you might see, optionally with ka, you might just see pega cool pile. Same thing. Pega pa. You know, I'm hungry. Pega cool pile. I am hungry in the morning always. 저는 항상 아침에 배가 고파요. I am always hungry in the morning. I am always hungry in the morning. So you wake up every day. 항상 아침에 배가 고파요. I'm always hungry in the morning when I wake up, right? I'm not, but I know a lot of other people are. I'm, I'm more of a night person. I'm always hungry at night. But uh, in the morning, I, I could care less about breakfast most of the time. I don't know. What, what about you guys? Are you more morning people or night people? Okay. So I'm hungry in the morning. Now I want to talk about a few words that you don't want to use a with. I already told you before that you don't want to use it with aldi or kogi or yogi, words like that. But there are a few more. It's used after um, any time you have a specific day, specific date or time, you always use it. So if you're saying se shi e at three o'clock, um, but let's just keep this simple. I'll just, man, maybe, maybe let's keep it simple. Anytime you're doing a specific time, use it. So anytime you're talking about a time, always use A. But you will not use it when you're talking about things in general that have to do with time. Now this is time now. We're not talking about location marking. Um, you're not going to be using it with things like 어제, yesterday, 오늘, today, 내일, tomorrow. You're not going to use 오늘, A, 내일, A, 어제, A. Not to say that you can't but you won't. It's not used with these. Just like oldi, most of the time is not used with them. In this case though, uh, 내일 a would sound awkward. So it's not used with general time nouns like this. 
Um, it's also not used with any word that starts with may, like may year, may chu, may nyan, meaning um, every day, every week, every year. You're not going to use it with this type of thing. You're not going to say may year a on every day. You're not going to say that. Um, it's also not used after, um, oh no, but it is used after specific times. So again, that would be, you know, hours. It's also achim, as I said before. Chomsim, which would be lunch, lunchtime. Oops, I wrote that wrong. And then chonyok for evening. So you could say chon. You could say chonyoge, chomsime, achime, but you wouldn't do it for other things. So use it for time. Use it for this. Don't use it for these specific words. This is an easier way to to learn. Just don't use it for these specific words. Don't throw it around for every sort of time. Don't throw it around every time you're saying a um, when something's happening. Just use it for specifics. Just specifics. So if you need to be specific about some sort of time, like at 3 o'clock or in the morning, then use it like you would in English. But if you're going to say in tomorrow, in yesterday, in every day, it doesn't match. So it's kind of similar to English, though I'm hesitant to say it's just like English, but it's in a similar way. You would say in or at in English whenever you need to specify the time. And it's the same in Korean. If you don't need to specify it like in the morning, yes, or at five o'clock, at, you know, that location. If you don't need to be specific with the time, don't use it. So that's what I wanted to say. Um, another thing is related to this. A should only be used once if you're going to get, uh, if you're going to mark time, you only want to mark it once. So let me give you an example of that. Um, maybe you want to say on Friday, okay? Kumyuil e. Perfect. Kumyuil, specifically on Friday, we will meet. Kumyuil e, mannayo. We will meet on Friday. You can say that. You can also just say kumyuil mannayo. We're meeting Friday. Cool. We're meeting on Friday. Cool. Kumyuil e, but what if you want to say Friday afternoon? Well, the word for afternoon is o hu. O actually means um, like noon. This means like the middle of the day, noon. And who means after. So after the middle of the day, or we would say PM in English, you know, afternoon. So ohu, and the, the other option is o chan, o, and then chan before, which is AM. So if you wanted to say Friday PM, Friday in the afternoon, you might think I should say, you might think that you should say kumyuere ohu e mannayo. You might think this because kumyuere on Friday in the afternoon. Let's meet on Friday in the afternoon, right? Seems fine, but you would be wrong because in Korean, whenever there are more than one time nouns, like a time noun would be like, you know, today, uh, tomorrow, Friday, three o'clock, any sort of noun that has to do, any sort of word that has to do with the time. Anytime you have two of them or more, you only use a on the last one. The other ones are considered to be all a part of it. So instead of saying kumyuil e, ohu e, mannayo, if you have two of these, they always remove the first one. So you would say kumyuil ohu e. If you wanted another one, you could say, you know, kumyuil ohu hanshi e at one o'clock. Kumyuil ohu hanshi e. So you're not going to say kumyuil e ohu e hanshi e. Right? It sounds, doesn't it, it kind of feels weird if you were to say that anyway. So I, I think you probably, um, you probably wouldn't want to say that because it feels, if you started to say that sentence in Korean, you'd feel like, wait a minute, my Korean, what's wrong? Something feels weird. So yeah, don't do it. it what your, uh, your instinct is correct. ohu hanshi e. So only use a at the end of a collection of time nouns. Don't stick it on every single one, even though you could legitimately say kumyuil e mannayo, ohu e mannayo, hanshi e mannayo. Those are all fine, but when you put them together, kumyuil ohu hanshi e. The other thing I wanted to say is that time will always go in the largest unit to the smallest unit. So we have kumyuil, Friday, ohu, p.m., hanshi e, one o'clock. So it goes from largest, the day of the week, the time of that, sorry, the, the section of that day, whether it's a.m. or p.m., and then the specific time. So it wouldn't be hanshi kumyuil ohu e, 
it'll always be largest to smallest. And if you wanted to even be more specific, you can say 다음 달, you know, next month. 다음 달, uh, 금요일, 오후 한시, you know, anything you add on, pay attention to how large is it. So something like the year is bigger than the month. The month is bigger than the week. The week's bigger than the day of the week. You know, the day of the week's bigger than the a.m. or p.m. A.m. p.m. is bigger than the actual time. The hour is bigger than the minute. The minute's bigger than the second. That's how it always goes. And um, although we kind of do some of that in English, it's more profound in Korean. It's more, it's more important in Korean. So you would also say three o'clock and 30 minutes and 25 seconds in English. And they do the same thing in Korean, but it's just more strict for all time. Always largest, largest time unit always goes before the smallest time unit. So that's how you want to organize it and then only use one A at the end if it's something that you would use A with. Okay. So that's the end of our explanation for A. So hopefully you guys have got it. There, um, let's go next on to A sol. A sol is actually also a location marker. Just like A. A so is actually um, very closely related to A. It's just A plus so. That's it. It's not a different, completely different particle. So you don't really need to think of this as a completely different particle. It's simply another version of A. And I'll, I'll talk about what this is in a second. Oh, nice. What is that currency? What is that? It looks like a, it looks like a rune from like a, a spell or something, <laughs> twice once, twice once. I don't know what that, what that rune is. I can't read it. It's like the Bluetooth symbol. <laughs> uh, see, how do I, how do I write that? I'm sorry, what is it? Rupee, okay, rupee, that's right. The only, you know where I know, I know rupees from uh, Legend of Zelda? <laughs> That's where I learned the name rupee, and then I was shocked to find out it's a real currency name. Indian rupees, okay, that's right. I don't know how much that is, but thank you twice one. Thank you, Sam, for teaching. Oh, you wanna use the uh, other one, Sam with an I-E, the other, the other spelling of it. But yeah, same pronunciation though. Thank you, I appreciate it, let me give you a dab. Thank you. Uh, okay, so this Saul actually appears in a lot of cases. It is the, um, it's part of the Saul form, but you don't really need to know that. Let me give you a note. So if you are intermediate, pay attention. If you are a beginner, you can ignore this. But there, you know the form, we hate Saul. You know this form, there are actually lots of forms that use hey Saul that have some sort of we hate Saul or, um, about. Okay. Um, anytime you're using his hall like this, the hall is optional, but it sometimes isn't. So uh, let me give you a quick example. So again, this is for, let's see. Okay, this is for intermediate. So let's just use te he So you have te he about, you know, something, something, te he about that thing. Well, Technically, so is optional whenever it's followed by a descriptive verb or a regular transitive verb, meaning you know any sort of verb that could do something. But you can remove you. You're supposed to use it whenever you're whenever it's followed by an action verb. This so indicates that some sort of action is going to happen. That's what this so actually means. Now, this is optional in a variety of forms. So you you'll see like I'm. I'm I'm coming up with a blank because I didn't prepare this part in advance to think of a bunch of more examples. But there's a lot of grammar forms that will use this hall where it's optional. And you probably know what I'm talking about if you're intermediate. You've seen the form, it'll show like, te he so optional. Oh, when can I use it? When can't I? And it'll say it's completely optional. Yeah, it's completely optional. But if you use it, it indicates, it shows str more strongly that what's following is an action. It shows that the next thing coming is doing an action to this part. So that's what, it's optional, but if you add it, it shows that action. With ASOL, however, it is the same SOL that shows that following this is going to be some sort of action. 
So it's the same meaning whether you say etehe, like hangugo etehe kongbu esoyo. I studied about Korean or hangugo kongbu etehe so kongbu esoyo. They're the exact same meaning, but these whole form shows it's the same meaning, but it shows more that it's going to have to do with an action. Etehe so. Now the next part that comes has to be an action. Cannot be anything else. It has to be an action. Um, so that's what the sol does, but it's optional again with these forms. This sol does the exact same thing. This sol shows that whatever's following is going to be an action, and therefore, okay, beginners, you can now pay attention again. You can ignore that if you're a beginner. You don't need to know that. Okay, so because of that, anytime you use a sol, it has to have some sort of action followed by following it. So it's also a location marker, just like a. It shows where something. Uh, it could show where something exists, but it's it's showing where something's going to or something's existing, but has to be followed by an action. So therefore, you can think of it more. So, although that's the literal meaning, you can think of it more as showing where an action happens. So this is the location marker that shows where an action happens at or where an action happens in, showing action verbs. However, there is one difference. It doesn't show the location of where something is going. It only shows where some sort of action is happening at. So you wouldn't say, um, "Chip eso kayo." Chip eso kayo would mean literally. It would be grammatically correct. It would mean he is going somewhere at the house. It doesn't mean he's going to the house. It means zip eso. So here we have the location marker, the house. So the house is a location, and so some sort of actions happening there. At the location, some sort of actions happening there. What action is happening at the house? Kayo. Someone is going. Okay, so someone's at the house, and then they're going from the house somewhere else. That's what you would get. Linguistic. Uh, sorry. Literally, that's what it would mean. It would sound awkward though, because without any other context, zip eso. Something, something, something going. Kyle, where? What? You can use it correctly to say Chibeso somewhere, somewhere. Kyle, it's okay. You could say Chibeso Hakyo e to school. Hakyo e Kyle. Now what you get is at the house, the location. Something is happening. Well, what's happening? Well, someone's going, and now we have hakyo e to school. So that's okay. You can do that. But I just want to make it clear that this is the same particle as e, but now it has to be followed by some sort of action that's happening there. So this shows where an action is happening, where an action is happening, and that will not directly be going to. So you're not going to mark where you're going to with e so. But we will get back to how it can be how it can be used with going in a bit. As in, I gave that one example really quick with hakyo. I'll give you another one later. We'll we'll go into that a little bit more. So let's give you a basic example of this. I don't know. I know this is beginner, but maybe there's some intermediates that are kind of like, oh, that makes a little more sense because I know I ex I tend to explain things a little bit differently than um, books do. Chonin, kushikdan. So that shikdan means restaurant. If you look at it in a dictionary, you might find the definition of cafeteria. Um, usually, these days, it's not really used for that as much. Shikdang is more just a restaurant. So your typical restaurant, shikdang eso. So now we have the location of something happening is the restaurant, specifically ku shikdang, that restaurant. So tonen ai, that restaurant eso at that location at that restaurant something's happening. Well, what's happening? Ir Hada, irheo. Irheo means I work. So irhada means to work. So now we get, 저는 그 식당에서 일해요. I work at that restaurant. I, that restaurant, is the location of where an action happens. Well, what action happens? Irheo, I work. So I work at that restaurant. Or I work in that restaurant is okay too. It could be in, I work in. You don't have to necessarily say, on is all inside of, unless you need to specify that. No, no, I work inside of that restaurant. I don't work outside of that restaurant, which is a different company. You know, you could say like if you wanted to specify, you can say shikdan an is all if you needed to, but you don't need to to get the meaning of in in English. Is all just means that's the location where something happens. Okay, let's do one more example. 
Oh, I'm really behind on time. Okay. Um, Charsu lives in England. Charsu is Yongguk. Yongguk is England. Uh, Aesol? Let's do Aesol for right now. Sarayo. Sarda mean to, means to live. Okay. Charsu, so our friend Charsu. Charsu is Yongguk, England, Aesol. Something is happening in England. Something is happening in England. Well, what is happening in England? Well, Charsu is living. Sarayo. In England, Charsu is in England. Charsu lives in England. He lives, and the location where he's living, he's doing something at that action is England. Now, if you are not a super beginner, if you've seen this floor before, you might be thinking, "Well, Billy, I have seen a sarayo before. I've seen a used with sarda too," and that's perfectly correct. The reason is. As I told you, eso is not dif is not different from e. They are the same original particle. They are both e. But so indicates that the following thing must be an action. Yongguk e sarayo is perfect too because remember what is the e particle? The e particle is the location marker. It marks the location where something exists. In this case, we're not going to say isoyo. He is in England, but sarayo. Now sarayo is also used to mean. Just someone is somewhere. It doesn't necessarily have to mean he is living there, like living the life. He's like doing stuff. No, no, he is just living. He exists there. He's alive. He's existing there. So sarda is actually an exception. Sarda can use both a or a sol to say living in or living at, like that. So you can say Yongguk a, or you can say Yongguk a sol, or you know any country. Sarayo, sarda to live in. Korea, 한국 에 살아요. 한국 에서 살아요. Both are perfect. Though there is a slight literal difference. If you say 영국 에 살아요, it simply means he is in England. Like that's the place that he is living is in located in England. And if you say 영국 에서 살아요, it's kind of like you're saying he is living there. That's where he is living his life out. But both are perfectly fine, and Koreans will use both. They won't flinch if you use 에 or 에서. It's perfectly fine to use either. So yeah, just think of Sarda as an exception. Oh, I got another nation. Nice. Let's see who's this one. Get my purple marker ready. Twice one. I still don't know how much is. I still don't know how much is forty rupees. Twice one. Thank you. I appreciate it though. Twice once. I gotta draw. I. It's, I'm trying to draw the symbol. Not much, but uh, really want to show my gratitude. Yes, I appreciate it. Twice once. Let's give another dab for twice once. Is twice once, is that, does that have to do with the twice K-pop group or is that a different twice? Thank you. Let me calculate. Okay, yeah, 56 cents. Yeah, sure. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, that's great. Also, you still get a dab. It's okay. And you know what? I appreciate it. Everyone who can give anything, I appreciate it, really. Like, some people are rich, and they give, you know, I've gotten, before I've gotten, like, a uh, $1,000 donation before. Uh, I got once, one time. I got a few hundred dollar donations. You know, people who are wealthy do that. People who are not wealthy, I don't mind. I appreciate you guys just showing up here. So, thank you guys. Okay, let's go on. So, the next example, let's do... Norebang is ho. So Norebang. Norebang is just the combination of Nore, song, with Pang, which means room. So this is how they call uh well song room. You can think of it like that. These are these uh the karaoke rooms that you would see in Korea. Although these days most karaoke rooms are actually coin. Coin Norebang, which means coin. The reason they're called coin Norebang is because you put coins in them. You don't have to go to the front desk and pay in advance or um, get a big room for like 20 people. Koi norebangs are usually only for about 
three people, two, three people, although you can fit more. I've, went, I've gone in a singing room with uh, seven friends before. We're all standing up, so you can do it. But normally it's like two or three people and you pay by the song. So you put in a dollar, we'll get you like two songs to two to four songs, depending on the place. So these days they're koi nori bongs, which I'll tell you a fun word. Koreans abbreviate this to kono, kono, which is koin ko nori bang. Kono is a slang word for koin nori bang. It's a little bit, um, it's slangy, so it's not going to be like an official word. You're not going to want to use it if you're writing an essay or talking to a teacher. But if you're talking to your friend, you just want to say you like kono. There you go. So use kono. So nori bang is Let me write this sentence really quick, and then I'll check the donation. Nori bang is nori. So song. So, oops, okay, let me check the donation. 254. Oh, I got a new member too. Awesome. Kanani Designs. Kanani Designs member. Awesome. And Maria, Valeria, Maika. Oh, love from England. <laughs> I thought I was going to be like, love from Spain, but it's like, love from England. All right. Thank you, Maria. I'll just write Maria VM here. Thank you. I got to give dabs to both of you guys for my new member, um, Kanani Designs. Welcome. And also to the donation, Maria Valeria Maika. Yes, can you can you tell that I've got my um, it's my uh, Mexican and Spanish blood that's helping me to pronounce this <laughs> accurately. <laughs> I don't know, I can't even say it with a straight face. Thank you. <clears throat> Gracias. All right. Um, yes, thank you to both of you as well. <laughs> so yes, Norebang is all. So now we have the location. Something's gonna happen. So Norebang is all. Something's gonna happen. Well, what happens? Nore song, pulloyo. I sing a song. Nore der pururda is how you can say one way to say sing a song. Another way people just say dore hada. It's fine too. Nore der pulloyo. So I sing or someone sings at a singing room or karaoke room. Nore bang e so nore der pulloyo. I sing a song at a song room. If you haven't been in a song room in Korea, they're awesome. They're really cheap. They're fairly clean and really easy to use. So they're, yeah, they're great. They're a great place to go. You can even go by yourself. Um, they have lots of single room, like us, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, really small room coin dorebangs that you can check out. I, when I'm in Korea, I'll really just um, put $3 in my pocket, go sing nine songs and then go back home. I don't have to interact with anyone. Just walk in, sit down, put them in, select the songs I want practice, you know, I'm terrible at the songs I'm practicing, but no one cares. No one even hears it. And uh, then you leave and you get to relieve some stress and it's a lot of fun. So yeah, I definitely re recommend checking out a coin norebang if you're ever in Korea. So then, may as I mentioned before, is every, so every day. So then, so I every day. Tosogwan is library. Hall at, so now we have the location of something happening at or in, in the library or at the library. Kongbu heo. Kongbu hada mean to study. So kongbu heo, I study at or in library every day. Chonen meir tosokwan eso kongbu heo. I study every day at the library or I study in the library every day. However you want to translate. So here we have the location. Something's going to happen at the library. If you were to say I'm just in the library, you wouldn't use tall because it's not showing any sort of action. So kongbuhada here is the action of studying. Like while I'm talking, I'm like erasing it. I have a bunch of examples, so I want to make sure you can go through. Okay, I think we can skip. Um, actually, no, let's do this. Let's do this. Tarsu, so now we have Tarsu object. So Tarsu, something's gonna happen to Tarsu because we marked him with an object marker. So Tarsu, TV, TV just means TV. It's just a, a shortened word to say television. 
television. TV에서. So now we have Charsu. Something's going to happen to Charsu. Well, TV location. So the TV is the location, right? A. Eh? So at the TV or on the TV or in the TV. But now something's going to happen. So TV에서. Well, what's happening at the TV or on the TV? 보다 means to see. So 봤어요. See or past tense here. Saw. You could add 전 here if you want. I or someone. 철수를 TV에서 봤어요. I saw 철수 on the TV. TV에서 봤어요. So here it's marking the location where an action takes place and the action is taking place on the TV. I saw, so to see is also an action. To see is an action. To see on TV, 철수. We marked him with the 를 because the 를 is marking what we saw with 보다. 철수를 봤어요. I saw 철수. 철수를 TV에서 봤어요. I saw 철수 on the TV. So you're watching TV. Hey, that's 철수. Oh, he got arrested. Yay. You know, you saw him on TV. Next example. Okay. Um... Let's just do this. Check is all. So a book. So we're moving away from just like physical, you know, like buildings or something like that. You can also use this with any sort of location where an action happens. So here, check a book. It's all. So something's happening at a book. What could happen at a book? Peuda means to learn. So peuosoyo. I learned it. Or peuoyo. I learn. I learned it in or at a book. So the book is the location where something takes place. So the book, something's happening at the book. Well, what's happening at the book? Learning it. I'm learning it at or in a book. Or you know what? I can think of a better translation for this. I learned it from a book. From. From. Okay, 책에서 배웠어요. Well, it could mean from too, and not just in this example. In many examples, 에서 can also be used to mean from. The reason is it's simply showing the location that something exists. The location, sorry, the location. The reason is it's just showing the location that something happens at. So in this case, you are learning something where? Where are you learning it? Well, you're learning it in or at a book. Well, in English, we wouldn't say I learned it in a book as much as you would say I learned it from a book, right? So that's what we get this meaning of from. And I'm going to talk about that next. How can it mean from? Okay. Oh, I got another donation. Let me leave this up for a second. Who is that? Oh, another member. Twice. Twice. Twice once is now on the board twice. I mean, three times. Thrice. Twice once is thrice on the board. Huh, huh, huh. Welcome twice once, three times. I gotta give you a dab. New member. If I get enough members, I can add another um, emoticon as well. Whew. Thank you. Twice once. All right. Twice once. Did I say twice? Did I say something else? Oh, I maybe I was making a joke or I said it wrong. Okay. So let's talk about the next part about using a all. Because I said sometimes it can be it can be used to mean um, from. Well, it can. It can also be used to mean from a location. But we're going to talk about it in a second. Um, ASO can also be used to mean from a location when it's used in the proper context. So you saw one example with the book. I learned it from a book. In that case, from sounds most, most natural. But you can also use it at a, with a location. So before you had 집에서, right? If you, if you were to say 집에서 공부해요, it would mean I study at the house. But you could also think of it as saying I study from home, right? I study from home. Because it's happening at the, it's happening at the house. Well, what if you were to say Tibesol 
왔어요. 집에서. So we have house is the location of something happening. Well, what's happening? 왔어요. Someone's coming somewhere. They're not coming to the house though. The house is where the event is happening. So the, the event of coming somewhere, not house, coming somewhere is happening at the house. In English, we would say from. I came from home. I do, it's not I came to home. If it was I came to home, it would be just jeep a, right? Because remember we said Saul has to show some sort of action happening at that location. So here, si ve Saul, so it means I came from home, not I came to home. Well, what if you were to say something like, um, actually, let me give you an example. So here's how to say from a location to another location. Now I'm writing it like this, A, A Sol, B, Gaji. You would replace A and B with whatever locations you want. And I should make a point. You don't have to use these together. These are actually separate concepts. You could say A, A Sol, anything, or B, Gaji, anything, somewhere to a location. You don't have to use it in this order. You don't have to use it in this exact format. So you might just see B Gaji with something else, and you might not even have a, an A Sol in the sentence. Or you might vice versa. You might say A Sol something from without having Gaji. So these are two forms that are often used together, but they don't have to be. And this is to show to or from a location. So let's give the first example though. Uh, we're first going to talk about Gaji because Gaji actually has a lot of uses. We're not going to talk about all of them today. Something Gaji. Gaji means until. Literally, Gaji means until, as in up to. Like up into, up until, or up to, or even by. The image of Gaji is going up into, sorry, the image of Gaji is going up to a location and then stopping. So you might say by, like by that location or by three o'clock, or you might say up to the wall, like walk up to the wall, or go until uh, you run out of gas, right? Until, up to, by. That's the meaning of gaji. But it can have lots of different uses depending on how it's in a sentence. But today we're going to be talking about this one. So this is the literal meaning of gaji. So if you say B as a location, like let's just say hakkyo, school, gaji, what you're really saying is up in, you're saying until the school. So it could be like walk until you get to the school. Or it could be up to, like walk up to the school. Or it could be by, like if you go by, actually would, that wouldn't mean pass. It doesn't mean pass by. It's up to by. So like until, by, three o'clock, like that. By, this would be mostly with time. So if you're talking about time, you'll say by as the translation. But with locations, you'll do until or up to. So yeah, Hakyo Kaji would be up to school. So let's give you an example with this. Um, 내일 means tomorrow. You can say, please do it by tomorrow. 내일까지. And then, 해주세요. Or 하세요, or whatever you want to say. We're going to say, 해주세요, which is kind of polite. So, 내일까지 해주세요. Please do it by, until, up to, tomorrow. 내일까지 해주세요. Please do it by tomorrow. So going up until tomorrow, but not reaching tomorrow. So before tomorrow happens, by tomorrow, you know, all the way up until tomorrow, do it, please. 내일까지 해주세요. So please do it by tomorrow. You could also change that instead of 내일까지 해주세요. We could also say something like 저는 2시, so we have 2 o'clock, 2시까지 until by up to 2 o'clock. So I, until 2 o'clock, 시간 means time. 시간 있어요. So I have time, or 시간 이 있어요. 저는 2시까지 시간 있어요. I have time, so time exists. 시간 있어요, there is time. By 2 o'clock, until 2 o'clock, up to 2 o'clock. So I have time now. I have time later, I have time later, but then when it's two o'clock, I won't have time. So I have time until two o'clock. So by two o'clock, 
until two o'clock, up to two o'clock, I have time, or there is time, literally. 저는 두 시까지 시간 있어요. I have time until two. I just want to show you how 까지 is used first, and then we can talk about how it's 까지 is used together with a song. So let's do another 까지. 철수는, we have our friend 철수. We have 학교까지. 학교까지, so up until school, so up to school. Oops. And let's just do this. Okay. 뛰어갔어요. 철수 학교까지 up to school. To school. 뛰어갔어요. 뛰다. 뛰다 means to run. 뛰어가다 means to run and go somewhere. So I could do a lesson about that in the future. But basically, 뛰어가다 means to run somewhere. 뛰어, 뛰다, and 가다, combined. Running and then going. So he ran going. He ran there. 뛰어갔어요. He ran to 까지, 학교까지, school. So he ran to school. 철수는 학교까지 뛰어갔어요. Now, you might be wondering then, Maybe you are wondering it, but if you're not, I'm going to make you wonder it now. Um, you might be thinking, well, Billy, if gaji means up to or until, why can't I just say hakyo e? Diogasoyo. He ran to school. You can. The difference is that gaji is used to show up until or until or to or up to, like that. Gaji shows some sort of distance. So, uh, let me at least explain it again. Gaji shows that there's something happening up until that point, whether that's time or location. So if you were to say hakyo gaji, what you're saying is that the whole way to school, all the way up to school, whereas if you say e, all you're doing is saying the location that he ran was school. So the meaning, the literal meaning, is slightly different. You're saying chersunan hakyo e diogasu, you're just saying he ran to school. To school, the direction he ran that lo that's the location he ran is to school. We're saying hakyo gaji diogasu. You're saying he was running and he was running and he was running and then he got to school. So gaji kind of shows more emphasis in a far away location. So if you want to emphasize that something's far away or emphasize that the journey getting there, there's some sort of journey there to go there. Something happens on the way. You know, it's not just an immediate location that you're getting to, but there's something going. To get there, use gaji. And you can use gaji instead of e anytime you want to emphasize that sort of distance up until then. So if you were to say um, one of our earlier examples we had, tonen uh, jibe kayo, I go home. If you were to say jib gaji kayo, that would be like your house is really far away. Like I went all the way over there, I went all the way up to my house. Otherwise, you wouldn't need to use gaji if it's like, Next door. Like if you're at your friend's house next door and you said, I'm going up to my house. They would think like, why are you saying that? Is this like a journey or is this part of a journey or something like that? Or is it difficult for you to get there? Because what you're doing by using gaji is emphasizing that sort of the everything that happens up until that point. So gaji includes, gaji means to, but also including up until that. So that's the difference. But you can use either. If you're just going to say location, just use a. If you need to emphasize like going somewhere, then use gaji. And gaji will come up a lot. You'll see gaji all the time, especially for things like running or walking somewhere, or going some sort of long distance. You'll see gaji. So hakyo gaji, diogasu. He ran all the way to school. Charsunen hakyo gaji, diogasu. Diogasu. Okay, let's do, okay, so let's do an example of our, let's do an example of this. So Sorry, I wrote that wrong. So we did diogada before, now we have korokada. Korokada means to walk. It's a combination of kota meaning to walk and kada meaning to go somewhere. So korokada to walk 
to go somewhere. So walking somewhere. 집에서 학교까지 걸어갔어요. So I, from home, 집에서, or house is where some action happens at. So what's, what action is happening at the house? Well, I am walking somewhere, 걸어가다. What, where am I walking to? 학교까지, up to school. So I walked from home up to school. So I walked from home to school is the meaning that we get. Whoa, I got a big donation. I didn't see a light flash though. Is the light delayed or maybe it hasn't flashed yet? Whoa, $20, major donation. I think the lights didn't work for that. Maybe they don't know, the lights don't know what to do yet. I have to add that then. Stephanie, wow. Yeah, I think that the lights, the lights don't know what to, how to react when I get the, the new uh, donations with the stickers. So I have to tell it that. Wow, Stephanie, that's awesome. Any, any message you want to say? Oh, keep teaching. Thank you. I will definitely keep teaching. But first, I got to give you a dab. Got to give you a big $20 dab for that. I can't do anything else. Thank you, Stephanie. I really appreciate it. Whew. Okay. Oh, let, me, let me put a note for uh, fixed stickers. Okay, yeah, because the stickers is a new feature in YouTube, so I think it doesn't communicate with my lights yet. So I have to add that. <laughs> we will rock you. All right. So, okay, so let's do another example. I'm a bit behind on time. It's taking longer than I thought to explain A and A, so I think I'm going into a bit more detail than I was expecting when I wrote this lesson. I was thinking like, yeah, beginner topic should take, you know, 20 minutes, but I'm already uh, 15 minutes behind, <clears throat> but it's okay. Okay, let's do, oh yeah, let's do this. So we have charsu again, charsu ka. So charsu now is the subject of something. Well, what's, gonna, what's the subject? Something's gonna happen or we're gonna do, we're gonna use some sort of verb for charsu. Charsu ga, kogi e so, from there or at there, yogi kaji, up to yogi, up to here, oda, so we're going to use future tense, or koeo, so will come. So now we have charsuga, kogi e so, from there, yogi kaji, to here, or koeo, future tense of oda, to come. So charsu will come from there to here. Charsu is coming here from there. You know, maybe charsu lives really far away. Charsu ga kogi eso yogi kaji or koeo. Charsu is coming here from there. Okay. Remember how I said kogi, yogi, togi, like those words optionally use a, but most often don't. The same applies for so, because a so and a are the same particle originally. So most of the time, a is not used with these particles, with with those same words yogi. Oldi, chogi, kogi, like that. So what you're left with is just kogi sol. Now the a is optional, but the sol is not. You still use sol because sol is needed to mark that an action is going to happen. If you don't use sol, it wouldn't really mean that there's an action happening there. Charsu ga kogi, charsu is over there, yogi ka jiyok, and he's coming over here. Like it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite make sense. You need the sol to show that there's going to be something happening there, to show that there's an action. So you get charsu ga kogi so, yogi kaji or koeo. And the same applies with the other words. So I told you oldi as well. You get oldi so, yogi so, you know, like that. Chogi so, kogi so, just like with e. So let me give you another example of that. We have oldi so. Oldi so wasoyo. If you go to Korea, you will hear this sentence. It'll probably be asked by some really old guy. Be, eh? Where are you from? You know, like that. is But like I said, A is optional and most often removed from oldi. From where? Or at where? Where is something happening at? Well, 
It's happening from where? And what is it that's happening? You're coming here. Uda means to come here. It doesn't just mean to come there, like I'm coming to Korea. You can't say I'm coming to Korea in Korea. You have, I mean, sorry. You can't say I'm coming to somewhere else. You have to say I'm going. And coming means coming here, always to this location. So where did you come here from? Well, I came from America. I came from Korea or whatever you want to say. Where are you from? Literally, that's how they say. They don't say like, I could give you a bunch of weird examples for how you don't say where are you come, where are you from, but they say where did you come from? Literally, when they ask where are you from. To which you can reply, Tolnin. Here I would say migu because I'm from America. Tolnin migu eso, and then wasoyo. So literally, when you reply, I am from America, what you are saying is I came from the country that you came from. So in my case, 저는 미국에서 왔어요. So the next time someone asks you in Korean, 어디서 왔어요? You say, 아, 미국에서 왔, 미국에서 왔어요. Or maybe you're from Germany, 독일, 독일에서 왔어요. 영국에서 왔어요. 캐나다에서 왔어요. 한국에서 왔어요. You probably wouldn't say 한국에서 왔어요 unless you're actually Korean. But you get the idea. You would literally say, I came from, and then whatever country. So, we're almost done. Be one more thing I want to say before we finish, because now we're almost done with the lesson. Actually, we are done with the lesson. But one more quick thing I wanted to say is that remember that ESO is only from a location. As you remember, E and ESO are only location markers. If you want to say from a time, you cannot use ESO. So although we used E for like tushi E, like at 2 o'clock, seishi E, atsim E in the morning, you would not use a so at a time. So if you wanted to say um, from a time, like from two o'clock, you wouldn't say to she a so. For time, we're not gonna go into this as a full lesson. It's actually, you shouldn't need a full lesson for this. All you do is you attach buto. Buto is how you say from a time. Now, buto has a few other uses as well. Um, but you can think of it for basic use, just for today. If you ever need to say from a time, you can use buto. But if you want to say up to a time, you can still use gaji. So if you wanted to say like, I have time from 2 to 3 p.m. Tushi buto seishi gaji shigan soyo. That's all you have to do. Gaji works. Gaji works for anything. But buto is only for, well, sorry. Eso is only for location. So instead, if you want to use a time to say from a time, use buto. And that is the end of today's lesson. I am 20 minutes behind. I apologize. Um, quick, before we, I'm going to open up for a quick Q&A so you can ask any questions you want. Um, uh, just want to say again that you can get the worksheet. There's a few other problems on here I didn't get to do today, but there's a worksheet with outlines on Patreon. And uh, you can get those if you're a Patreon member. Also, make sure to join the Discord for updates about the next stream. And if you have any questions, feel free. All right. Twice once. Twice once. I got to call you 200. So that would be 200. That would be like $2 US. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I really don't know how this works. Twice once. And now I can draw your currency symbol without looking. 200. Thank you. Fourth one. Wow. Nice. Let me give you another dab. 400, I mean, sorry, a 200 rupee donation. Thank you, Thrice One, for your donations today, as well as membership. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Um, yes, 70 is $1. I see, I see. Okay. Oh my sauce. I came from my mom. <laughs> you could say, Oh my pay is all. Pe, oma pe. You wouldn't just say oma, like that would be like you transformed out of her. Instead, you'd be specific and say pe, belly. I came from my mom's belly. You could say that. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny, I guess. So yeah, go ahead and um, I know today's lesson was beginner, though hopefully if you were, hopefully even if you were like a high beginner, you still kind of got something out of this explanation. I tried to explain it. I tried to think what's the clearest way that I could explain these uh, for today's lesson. So hopefully you still got something out of it. Thank you everyone for coming. And if you have any questions, now is the time. I will do a, at least a 10 minute or so uh, questions. 
버스가 서울에서부터 부산에서까지 가요. 아, you can just use 서울에서. Lynette, Lynette, John. Oh, I saw your name earlier today as well. You did a donation, a uh, $3 donation as well. Before. I'm sorry, three um, pound. <laughs> every time I see the F, the first thing I think is actually Frank because I did, I did French class and every time I see an F currency, I think it must be like a Frank, Frank. Thank you for the five pound donation. Fantastic first lesson, 감사합니다. Thank you, Lynn, et. Really appreciate it. I, I really appreciate all your guys' uh, donations. Um, this stream is kept active, as well as my channel is active through your through you guys, actually. People buy my books and watch my videos, and that's why I can keep doing this. So thank you to you guys, all of you. Okay, let's check out here. Oh, yeah. Alice Palencia, you wrote, 저는 은행에 지금 가요, which is grammatically okay, but 지금, time elements, time words will always go toward the front of a sentence. So you could say, 지금 저는 은행에 가요, or 저는 지금 은행에 가요, like that. Most commonly, the time that you do something comes right after the topic. So 저는 would go first, and then 지금 would come after, but that's okay. As long as the time goes at the beginning, you're okay. Could you give a quick example of the a meaning of 감기에 걸렸어요? <laughs> yeah, um, the reason is 걸리다. 걸리다 means to hang on something, to hang on something. So uh, it has a few uses actually, 걸리다, 걸리다. Um, 걸리다 is the passive form of something, 걸다, to get hung on something, to hang on something. So you're saying you're kind of trapped by a 감기. So in that case, it's more of a um, passive verb, pa sorry, passive usage. A and a gay mean by when used with passive verbs, if this helps. So anytime you're using a passive verb and you want to say, I like, I was hit by him. Charsu a gay, uh, I was hit, um, or I was kicked, chiosoyo, by charsu, or Charsu, I was eaten by Charsu, like any of the by is a gay for a person. But if you're using an inanimate object, you're using a instead. And the, what they're saying is to. So it was, you were caught to or by the cold, kamgi a, is kind of what they're saying. So it's a by form. And it's a because it's a ina inanimate object, kamgi, it's not a person. But you'll see a gay with people. So you might not know of a, which is the in inanimate version of this, by. I think I touched on that lightly during the passive lesson, but I can't remember. Okay, let's see. Venezuela, nice. Venezuela, cool, cool. Tell me a joke. No, thank I did make a video about Korean jokes. I'll upload it in a couple weeks. So check that out. Actually, I think it's gonna be, yeah, I think it's a couple weeks from now. I did a video all about Korean ajegegu, like so Korean dad jokes. K pop or suji mara yo. I can't stop it. Just turn up the volume until her, uh, until she starts getting tendonitis. What's that tendonitis? We like hear ringing all the time. I, I can't help. Sorry. Um, just hope that I never make another video where I sing. So you don't use a when describing a location. Correct, Brungle. It's only when you're talking about the location marker where something's going to or something existing is that. I buy your book. I'm very studied. Oh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Tina. Na, na, na. <clears throat> How would you say around this time? Someone asked. Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to read back. I want to make sure I read all your comments. Um, around this time, there's a few ways you could say it. Ite. This time. Te is time. Jim. Ite jim or ite jim eh. Like around. Jim is like approximately or around. So around this time, ite jume or chigum jume around now, if you want to say ite jume around this time, de meaning time. And there are other ways you could say it too. Depending on the depending on how you're using it. Oh, Amy Jane Foster again. Nice, thank you. Amy Jane Foster. Bye bye. Oh, you're leaving. Wait. I gotta give you a dab, so thank you. Yeah, I think I gotta fix my board so it'll accept those stickers too. <sighs> Amy Jane Foster, thank you. Okay, let me read to see what other questions I get. 
철수에게, 철수에게 먹었어요. Not 먹었어요. You'd have to use to be eaten. Uh, 먹히다. 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 먹혔어요. I was eaten by 철수. Or if it was an inanimate object, 에. 철수 is adults. <laughs> Usually 에 is all for location where an action verb is affecting something or something or someone comes from. And 에 is for cases outside of that. Yeah, it's correct. 렌신. 전 한국어를 진짜 배우고 있어요. I'm really learning Korean from it. Nice, Maria. And nice sentence from today. 오늘부터. And that's correct. 부터 is how you use it for time. 오늘부터. From today. Perfect. Even though I didn't teach 부터, you got it. Need more beginner lessons. Yeah, I'll, I'll what I'm going to do, um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking uh, requests prior, uh, with giving priority to my members and my supporters. And then when there, are not, when there aren't enough suggestions from them, then I'll take from the regular pool of suggestions that I have. So we'll get some more beginner lessons. We'll get some more intermediate and advanced topics in the future. It's not going to be only the beginner topics and only the advanced topics. So we'll get kind of a mixture. Korean customs. Um, I've done a few. I haven't done enough, throw away. Uh, check out the, the few that I have. How to behave while eating. I could do one on, on how to eat. That could be good. Uh, send me the suggestion on Discord so I can write it down. It's 5 a.m. I think I'm going to sleep the whole day. Wow. Uh, Billy 선생님, 오, 오후 5시부터. You wrote, 다소, you wrote 5 오후. You want to say 오후 5시부터. And then 6시. So, um, 저녁 is evening. So you can say 저녁. Gaji, like that, until the evening. And then, yeah, your sentence is, is okay. YouTube is a pasta. Nice, it's on YouTube. Jum. Yeah, you can use jum. Nice. I'm going to buy Billy's book. Alan MC, thank you. I'd appreciate that. Your guys' buying my book is what uh, keeps me afloat. It's what lets me keep doing this. Because if, uh, if I had to do a regular... Uh, like a company full-time job, if I wasn't able to devote all my time to doing this, I wouldn't be able to do like live streams or any of the extra stuff that I do because it would just take too much time. I just watched your goblin talking video. Have you forgotten about double Dutch for the US along with people? I still remember. Um, Okay, uh, I learned a lot. I'm just going through only with all. Uh, today's today. From today is not day number one. Tiffany, stay with day. Oh, let's see, I got another. Oh, Chris, oh. I'm so happy I finally understand the A in Kamgye Korida. Oh, nice. I didn't, I didn't know who, uh, who else was, uh, who else wanted that explanation when I gave it, talking about it's, it means by. So yeah, it is the same A particle. The A particle, like I said, is very versatile. It's used for marking location, but it can also be used for marking um, the actor, someone that does something. So it is it is really connected to A so, but it's not quite so straightforward. So yeah, it is the passive A as well. Thank you, Chris O, and I gotta give you a dab as well. You get five dabs for $5 donation. Thank you. Appreciate you doing full live streams. Maria, where can I buy my, your books? They sell them on Amazon. Um, they're also on my website in PDF form. Uh, if you see them on any shady websites, that's that's not legitimate. <laughs> some, some other websites will occasionally steal my books and try to sell them there. But anyway, yeah, you can get Amazon or Google Play or all the regular stores, um, as well as Book Depository sells it if you're not in the US, like if you can't get the physical book in the from Amazon. Kongbu. 지금부터 공부했어요. I studied from now. Uh, you might want to say 공부할 거예요 or 공부해요 because I studied from now wouldn't logically make sense because now, from now is in the future, but then 공부했어요 would be past tense. So you can't really do something from now in the past. But I kind of get where you're going with that. Did you do live stream on Opti? Yup, I haven't. I did a uh, Learn Korean episode with KeyCat about those particles. You can check out uh, prep post position. But I haven't done a live stream about it. Was that Sims talk? No, that's a ob language. That's actually just English. It's just speaking English by adding ob uh, before every. 
Yeah, before every vowel sound in English. So hello becomes habe labo. Habe labo, mabe nabe, mabe is babi labi gabo. Abe tabich kabarabian. Kabarabiaban, I guess. Korean. It's, it's kind of weird. I'm not too great at doing it. I, one of my friends who taught me is, is really good at doing it, though. Goblin is Korean drama. I never saw the drama. I've seen like a few screen captures of it, though, so I, I know what it's about. And he, in Goblin, he is a real goblin. He, uh, he even likes the buckwheat, just like I showed in that video. So even the goblin in the show is supposed to be a real Korean goblin, although he doesn't look anything like a Korean goblin would look like. Ehimang says, Oh, you wrote 감사합니다. Well, eh, okay, some people write it that way. But yeah, normally 감사합니다. No, it is. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Where can we post suggestions? Uh, Renshin, you can post suggestions in the members channel. Like I said, from now, I'm going to be taking suggestions primarily from my members um, and Patreon because I have a lot of suggestions and I want to make sure I'm teaching what people want to learn the most, not only beginner topics and not only advanced topics. So people who are supporting me will get first pick. And then after that, the extra ones, I'll put it from uh, your suggestions in the uh, live stream chat channel. That's where you can put them there. Mabalabi, Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby. <laughs> yeah, there's a Hobby Lobby not too far from here. All these all buto. Yeah, you could use all buto, which is just an emphasis of beef, of from, like from there. But uh, we're, yeah, we're not learning about that from today because we didn't really go into buto for today's lesson. But yeah. It's a form of Korean speech. Yes, that's right. Don't diss Kong Yu. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah, I know. I like it. It's pretty good. It's not my favorite flavor at Baskin Robbins, but uh, when I was in Korea, I would get that one the most. It's pretty good. I have a teacher from Busan. Told me we have to learn Seoul dialect first and then Busan, but I'm interested in Busan. What do you think? Can I learn both? Um, Alan MC, I'd recommend focusing on Seoul because Seoul is going to be the standard dialect that they will also understand in Busan. It's kind of like um, if you're learning Spanish uh, in the U.S., would you focus more on, um, I mean, that's not a good example. If you're learning English, would you rather focus on learning English like, you know, standard either L.A. or maybe mid-America? Mid or would you want to focus on learning like Texas dialect or like Eastern dialect? I mean, you can learn them, but it's best to learn with the fundamentals first and then learn those fun phrases in Busan dialect next. So I would focus on, wow, S. So I would focus on learning the standard Seoul dialect first. S, just S. <laughs> I know you though. I've seen your name before several times. S, you're, you're famous here. Thanks for your teaching. Can you do body wave dance? What is body wave dance? Is that like... Is that, is that like this? <laughs> like that? <laughs> I can't really do it, but I'm trying my best. <sighs> Thank you, S. I really appreciate it. That's a really big donation. Wow, $20. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, S. Shout out to S. I'm trying to see what, what, your, what your picture is. It looks like people riding, a bi riding bicycles. Two or three people riding a bike. Yes, S is the high bidder, definitely today. I see S's name at the top of the chat. Uh, yeah, I'll do just a few more, three more minutes of questions and then we'll stop for today. I don't wanna go too long. You know, most people are already, most people already left after the lesson. Become the wave. <laughs> From after this lesson, k popper turkoyo. Um, you don't need to use taom eso. You can just use taom e for time. Remember how I said e is used with time. Uh, Ezo is not used with time. And taom would be considered some sort of a, a post position after taom, like we e, ane, taom e, not taom ezo. So taom e, k popper, tur. So tutta becomes tur o yo, but in future tense, tur ko yo, like that. Okay, any other questions? You can ask any level question you want. Uh, I know today's lesson was beginner, but feel free if you have 
any level question you're curious about, go ahead and ask. And I'm going to totally change this eraser after today's lesson again. I ordered like 24 more erasers and I'm still waiting for them to come. It was like 25 bucks. <laughs> Billy, can you do a live where you choose a song and try to translate it and explain the vocab and grammar? I can't due to copyright reasons. I can't actually explain a song. Um, it's not copyright safe. So I might get away with it. The video might not get demonetized, but it could. And I wouldn't have any defense. It's not considered uh, fair use actually. Now, if one of you guys is friends with an indie musician who wrote a Korean song, that's different. I can get permission to do that from the artist. Uh, or if one of you wrote your own Korean song, if you're Korean, that would work too. That's okay. That's not copyrighted. That would be totally safe. Can you do a webtoon? Webtoon? Um, I can't draw well enough, but I will say... Uh, You'll, you'll like the book that I'm working on. That's all I'll say. It's not a webtoon book, but I'll, you'll like the book that I'm working on if you like webtoon. So I'll just say that. I mean, you could do it, you just couldn't monetize it. No, it could also get removed too. It could be considered a strike depending on what song I did. Um, I just got your first book a while ago and I'm really liking it. I feel like I'm learning a lot. Keep it up. Oh, thanks, Hayden. Hay uh, <laughs> Hayden or 752. Thank you, I appreciate it. Hope you enjoy it. Could you go through a Topic paper? That would also be a uh, no-no. I'm not allowed to do that. Uh, Topic, I actually asked Topic about that uh, specifically a couple years ago. I emailed them and requested that and they said, no, they don't allow anyone to do that. They have channels that go over the Topic, but those, those places have spe uh, specific permission from the Topic group to do that. Uh, they're, they're associated with the Topic group. So I, as a regular YouTuber, I can't do that. Ahimong can draw. Yeah, Ahimong draws us a Korean comic. We could definitely do that. That'd be great. What about fables? Uh, fables, the problem with fables is that they're also copyrighted unless I rewrite it. So the stories themselves, like the original stories themselves are not because those are really old, but the original stories are written difficult. Like I couldn't just give you the original stories because they are old Korean. So I wouldn't be able to teach you guys using old Korean because very few of you would be able to understand that or even read it because it looks different. So the stories that you know as fables are actually rewritten by people and those rewritten versions are copyrighted by the people who rewrote them. So in my second book, I actually rewrote a, um, a story, Hungbu wa Norbu. It's a very famous story of two brothers, Hungbu and Norbu. They're like farmer guys. And uh, I rewrote that story. So it's okay. I put that in my book. I teach it in the book with all the vocabulary. Uh, but I couldn't take someone else's re re rewritings of those stories and put them in my channel. So if you want to read one, it's in my second book. There's also a recipe. And uh, yeah, those were rewritten by me. So you can check those out. Those are copyright by me. So those are free. You can use those. Of consultant of sorts. Nice. Could you explain more slang words often used on Korean TV? Uh, yes, that would be fine. I could do that. Uh, if you let me know, like... If you give me some uh, suggestions for specifics on like, so I can kind of prepare for what that would be. Yeah, it's a possibility. I could do a lesson about like slang words and stuff. Everything's not allowed. No, it's more like uh, a lot of stuff's copyrighted. That's, that's the reason why I don't have any videos like learn Korean with K-pop or learn Korean with Korean poems or stories or news articles. That's the reason why it's just a copyright issue. So if I have my own news articles, my own stories and stuff, then it's okay. And I'm working on something like that right now, but we could learn song without the music. Uh, nah, the lyrics themselves are, are the problem as well. I wonder how Charsu would look in a comic. Yeah, I'm afraid to draw him. The moon and the sun. Yes, the moon and the sun. I also have a version of that story that I rewrote myself. Uh, so that one's okay. But yeah, originally moon and sun would also be not copyrighted the story but the versions that people have written of those would be, so. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what's a Agi Sango? Oh yeah, Agi Sango, do 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 do. That's actually a German song. So um, a, Korea, a Korean company, or maybe 
Chinese company, Korean company. Yeah, Pink Fong. Um, they took that song and, and monetized and definitely uh, made their own version of it. And now that's a big hit. But that's originally a German song I heard. YouTube. <laughs> Free use is supposed to protect people using certain copy used for educational. Yeah, it's, um, it, it doesn't, no, it does protect for educational. However, they could, I mean, I don't need to get, I don't really know if I want to get technical on this channel, but uh, educational purposes do not include teaching something always. It's strictly educational and they, they, it's not so easy as to say it's being used for educational use. So it's okay. Um, just because something's used for educational use, it just protects you in some cases, but if technically this isn't educational use because it's on my YouTube channel, um, I could demonetize the video, but still technically it could be considered monetized because my channel is monetized. So it's kind of a gray area and I don't like going into that for co copyright reasons. How about a toy key cat? I wish. Yeah, like uh, the fair use is designed to protect me as a creator. It doesn't mean that they can't try to sue me and it doesn't mean that they can't take down my video and everything. It just means that in the very end, I should win after having to spend tons of my time and fighting it and money. So that's the idea with fair use. It's just to protect you in the very end. Like, no, you cannot be attacked for this type of stuff, but you still might have to go through a legal battle if the company doesn't like that. So not every company is aware of it and not every company follows fair use. So it's kind of a, yeah, it's kind of a gray area because of that. Yeah, H3H3 is an example, even though in the end they won for being fair use content, um, it's, not a, it's not black and white. It's not so simple as saying, you know, oh, it was an educational usage. It's for news reporting uses. It's not so simple as that. Yeah, fortunately, H3H3 won. I really am glad that that worked out well. Yeah, it's not, and it's not YouTube either. It's actually just copyright laws in the US. And um, yeah, I mean, YouTube is a part of it. And they, yeah, they made some, made some mistakes with it as well for that. But in the end, it's a regular US copyright law. Yeah, almost, yeah, true. It cost them like $100,000 or something like that. Okay, anyway, so uh, any other questions, feel free to join me in the Discord. I don't want to take any more of your time. Thank you for coming, everyone. And uh, remember again, get out, get the outline and the worksheet if you're a Patreon member. Thank you for coming. Oh, yes, finally, the store opened. Oh yeah, it's the store. Oh, finally we can go in. Oh, oh, I've been waiting so long to go in. Oh, before I go in, let me just, before I get, get my food, let me just say thank you to everyone. Ibrahim, Poya S, Gina C, Amy Jane Foster, Lynette John, Yunjun, Twice Once, Kanani Designs, Maria, uh, Stephanie. Oh, that's again, <laughs> Chris O and S. Thank you to all of you. And thank you for everyone for watching as well or subscribing. And uh, I will see you guys again next time. So let, let me just uh, go in here. Oh. Been waiting for this place is stuck bulky forever. Wait a second. Oh wait, excuse me. 여기 여기 떡볶이 집 아닌가요? 잠깐. 여기 떡볶이 집 아니요? 떡볶이 떡볶이 아니요 여기? 와 만두라고? 만두라고요? 어, 여기 만두예요? Oh no! I was standing at the wrong line. The 떡볶이 place is on the other side. Oh. Oh, and the, the line's even longer. Oh my gosh. I just, I spent two hours here in line. I was in the wrong line. This is for mandu. I don't know. Maybe I'll just go eat some mandu instead. I don't really want to wait in another three hour long line. Okay, everyone. Well, anyway, thanks for coming, everyone. I will see you guys again next time. Uh, maybe I can try the tteokbokki again another day. Krum, tamik toba. Ah, mandu na mo Ah, jazing. Ah, ah.